Hello, and welcome to Knights of the Night Actual Play Podcast. This 5th edition D&D adventure, The Heretic, was written and run by your DM, Scott. And now, please enjoy episode 494, titled, Once You Get Those Wings, All of a Sudden Your Feet Hurt. Actual play begins immediately. Hello, everyone. This is Scott, your DM for this 5e adventure, The Heretic. With me tonight, starting on my right, is... I'm Tom. I'm playing Alder Rusha, a human male cleric of Amira, and a skill-seeking rogue. I'm Mike, and I'm playing Marduk, a male half-orc fighter, graduate of the Academy, and an eldritch knight of the Fist of Amira. I am Jim, playing Grodor, a hobgoblin warlock and one of the harpy-chasing fists of Amira, searching for truth knowledge, and whatever the heck else is in this cave. You missed a session. Yeah. yeah. I'm John, playing Melody, a female human cleric, the third of the exemplar family Harmony, an ex-ambassador turned political operative in the Fists of Amira. And I'm Thomas. I'll be playing Gabrielle D'Angelis, the female Asamar paladin and a holy fist of Amira who's unknowingly taken the first steps towards her destined oath of conduct. Last session... We concluded the lengthy grinding battle of the uh, rude mother harpy and her cave and brethren, lesser harpies. The, we knew it was over because Jim wasn't there. There you go. <laughs> the group had ascended the rock slide and entered into the harpy's lair. And their thoughts up to a fleeing group of harpies who were going deeper into the cave system, either to make their last stand or to try to escape in some way. Mel was the first one in there in hot pursuit. Gabrielle came in shortly thereafter, flying on her new wings and spectacularly crashed into the ceiling. I think it was, if not mistaken, trying to thread a very narrow gap between the harpies and the ceiling and get past them to cut them off, but unfortunately rolled a natural one and failed in a dramatic fashion. Eventually, the harpy brood mother called for a parlay as she felt threatened in her own domain. The group, beaten and battered, decided that it was probably in the best interest to talk through this one as opposed to fight it out and agreed to leave if the harpy brood mother would release the soul guard from her spell that she had them under. She agreed to that if the members of the Fist of Amira would sheathe their weapons and move to the entrance of the cavern, which they did. The group descended to reconnoiter at the pass. I actually was, wanted to ask. Sure. You described there was a wind tunnel effect when we were leaving the cave. Was the air going inwards or outwards? Because it might indicate whether there's a connecting exit somewhere. Yes. The wind was blowing into the cavern. And I want so, to remark that I should know because I had wings at the moment and I used yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Why? So the wind was blowing from west to east because that's the way the weather travels in this world. It is a narrow mountain pass. So there was a pretty substantial wind blowing, which mm-hmm. helped you not hear the harpy song along with Alder's spell that he did. He did a great job of drowning out as well the sound of the harpy to to allow you guys to not be under her sway for those of you who were even were very short lived. So as you departed, there was some grumbling about whether you should abide by the agreement that Gabrielle had made with the harpies, whether you should just use some magic to close off the entrance again and seal them into their fate or whether you should handle them in the future and abide by your word. And that's where we kind of left it with the guardsmen coming to and kind of looking to you for advice on what they should do now, because they are kind of perplexed at the situation. They're bruised. They're bloodied. Their hands are scraped up from moving rocks. They have lost time. They don't really know what happened over the last period of time that they were under her spell. You're not sure how long that was, but it didn't seem like it was overly long. And that's where we'll pick up this session tonight with the guardsmen kind of looking to you as to what just happened. 
the captain of the Soul Guard is looking at you beseechingly. He was wounded with his fight with you, and also his hands are bloodied from moving the rocks, and he just looks confused, and he's like, what just happened? What's going on here? Gabrielle, you want to explain what happened there? You and your squad were charmed by a harpy, a brood mother, looking to unbury her nest after the rock slide. That happened as a result of the sphere quake yesterday. This morning, actually, when you were just leaving town. We freed you at great labor and peril to our own selves. He blinks a couple times, looks down at his hands. Well, I thank you. I, I thank you for releasing us from their magical way. Harpies, you say. We just patrolled this pass not five days ago. And there were no harpies present, to the best of, of my knowledge, just an empty cavern up there. Was there any missing time on that trip? No, Perhaps none whatsoever. Hmm. I, well, it's probably the lawgivers. With war imminent, they're probably pushing creatures and ne'er-do-wells through the mountain ranges down into our territory to, to terrorize us. That's who I'll blame it on. That has to be it, because five days ago, this pass was clear. Hmm. You could be right. Keep a vigilant eye out in the future, and watch out for these harpies in particular. Perhaps you can mention this to the war eagles, and they'll uh, they'll keep an eye out for migrations in the future and be able to forewarn you guys. Would it help to have the elves guard the pass? Are they more resistant to charm? The captain nods his head. That is a wise choice. I believe we do have... Back in Iron Sword, we have some elves there. Maybe we could put a platoon together and head I would, back. Well, that's actually not a bad choice to hunt them down. I was thinking if you just wanted to safeguard the rest of the patrols, just having an elf in each one would someone to... Because it was only by the luck of this lad here who... Uh, he smiled sheepishly. ...managed to resist the enchantment and come find us down the road that we were even aware of your plight. Well done, Bran. And even that, sometimes the mirrors will, that one of you will get free, I suppose. Well, we were also quite fortunate with the mirrors will that you happened by and were able to break the spell for us. Bran on his own, I'm sure, could not have released the spell from seven of us with evil creatures attacking him as well. It was just her will for certain. He makes a holy gesture with his hand and says it was absolutely her will that you were here to save us. We will head back. We're closer to Iron Sword. We departed from Prevail a day and a half ago, and we will definitely just go quickly to Iron Sword and get together a group to come back and take care of this menace. You have done your service to your country. Thank you so much for your help. Always glad to save some lives. What's on a weak smile? Anything up the road we need to worry about? Well, the Redlands, when you come out of the pass, is always a bit treacherous. It's a barren area. I don't know how well-traveled you are in our lands, but the Redlands are a dangerous area, so just be on watch when you travel through them. Our way was clear. We traveled unimpeded through the Redlands, but it's a dangerous area, so just be on, on guard. With that... He nods a thank you, gathers his men, and starts talking to them and giving them orders for the next phase of their operation, which is to double march to Iron Sword and report immediately to a higher up, a superior, to send back reinforcements and get rid of this evil menace on the road. That entire conversation, I was staring at Gabrielle occasionally looking over at Melody. And when they finally step away, I turned back to Gabrielle. That wasn't what I was talking about. When I asked what the hell happened, I was referring to wings. That's something new. Wasn't a conversation I wanted to have in front of Soul Guard Captain, who was wondering what his last few hours had been spent doing. Reasonable, since he wasn't really cognizant of what was happening. I don't know any paladins that can do that. What is that? I think I'd already dismissed them. No, I said I didn't start the conversation until they left. He meant the wings. No, I meant my Oh, wings. the wings. Yeah, oh, I'm sure you did. 
Yeah, I wasn't going to. You were going to flaunt them in front of the Soul Guard? The High Exarch has been known to have such a thing. Alder does Raven he, Guard? Does he flaunt his wings? I don't remember. I mean, the there's so, stories. But... He certainly didn't have them out when he was at the Academy, but right, people talk. The High Exarch comes from a line that occasionally is populated with Asimars. I don't think I ever said Alder himself was one. Certainly a rumor, like, is he one? Because he comes from a line, and most of the High Exarchs come from a line of Asimar. There's certainly at least one instance where that can be pointed to, but it's exceedingly rare, very unusual. And you grew up with, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm speaking specifically to Alder and Mm -hmm. Mel right now. You grew up with her. So this is a stunning development as you are well role-playing it. Well, if you want to challenge him, I bet you could have a pretty decent claim. Wait a minute. I just have a question. The... Leader is called Alder as well. I'm named after. It's Alder. Alder. U L. It's a U. I just didn't pronounce it right. Okay. Damn. Freaking me out, guys. I was like, what the hell did my mother do? Why the am I named after? Alder. <laughs> did I have a different father I don't know about? I have a brother named Marduk. <laughs> adopted. I was adopted by my family in Temerity. Can't exactly explain the nature of my true heritage, but Right. I am what some people call an Asimar. I knew of my other traits, but do you remember how we all met in that stupid etiquette school? Mm-hmm. I was there as a punishment for expressing some of my more otherworldly traits. I learned how disruptive it can be. The expectations that are placed on Asimar in society that are out and flaunt it are tremendous. Seen as voices of the goddess, that's how our entire exemplar lines are chosen. I didn't want to have to deal with all of that during my days in society. Learned my lesson already. The wings are totally new. Couldn't exactly keep them a secret, and they were too tactically advantageous not to use. I never want to do a battle on a cliff again. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I just wasn't, it's not who I am. And uh, she half turns away. I understand that you didn't have to tell us. I just, well, I was just confused. There are times in the past it would have been helpful. This is my not second necessary. time flying ever. I I crashed tremendously. It was it was hilarious. Am I right, Mel? It was hilarious until my throat was being torn out, right? Yeah, I wasn't exactly laughing. All right, I found it hilarious. <laughs> okay. That was my second time almost dying today, so I was I was a bit lost for breath. But so, yeah, I mean, clearly you need to practice more. But is there a limit? Are there times that you could do that that would be beneficial? Or is it not something you want to share? Are they invisible? Kind of waves hand through back. <laughs> uh, they've just gone away. I, I can't explain it. You call them out. They go back to where they came from. You need help with anything. We're definitely here for you. You got wings too? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. oh. But right. I, I was someday, hoping somebody could practice flying with me. Someday I might be able to fly, but I don't think I'll have wings. Hey, next time can we bet on you with the, the war eagles? If we're there next year, I'm sure I'll compete, but I wasn't practiced enough this year. That's fair. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be a thing. We'll be the shining illuminary fists. It's a, it's a status already. Right? Me and Marduk with our glowing accoutrement. I look at my mother's sword like I'm getting left behind here. Hey, I have a crossbow, right? We're back to double speed, by the way. All right. Speaking of double marching. Because we need to beat these fools from the uh, chromatic compact. So Lantern's closer than Iron Sword Pass. We're going to have to speed up. What time of day is it? It's just past noon. You were probably six hours outside of Iron Sword when you happened upon the harpies. 
My point is it's early enough that we can push on. Yeah, you continue to push through the day with Marduk behind the reins with Brother Byron and the rest of you either walking alongside or resting in the back of the wagon as you move more quickly through the pass. And after another hour or two, you notice that you're no longer moving upward like you had been for the last couple days. You've reached a point where now you've rested and you're starting to move down through the pass. You've officially crossed into Eastern Amira. And the wind is still wicked at your back, still blowing hard, but you're on the downward slope now of Iron Sword Pass. Crisp day. It's a little cooler than you're accustomed to in your beautiful, temperate country of Amira. So, Gabrielle, i got to ask you, I mean, is it just easier? Could you just fly us about halfway there, one at a time? Talk about double time. We'd be moving a lot faster. Is that an option? Uh, I'm impressed with what you think of my muscles, but I can lift what I can lift. And besides which, the wings only work for a while each day. I'll come back tomorrow, I'm sure. So what's in, what's a while? An hour? Maybe they're, they're coming gone. too. I can't test. I've never opened them for as long as I could. I had to okay. close them for secrecy. Well, but you'll definitely be part of the practicing, I imagine. Sure. I haven't sure. tested the limits yet, Alder. Is there any other kind of powers? Can you oh, shoot, yeah, I can, shoot I can lightning in the dark and, and shoot uh, laser beams out of your eyes? Or? Can you talk to a mirror? That would be can nice. You talk to a wizard? And maybe <laughs> they can shoot some laser beams out of their eyes. I grow wings. I heal slightly better than the next paladin. And I can see in the dark. I've been lying about that because humans can't. You did kind of have a magical voice there earlier. That's that you... normal. Oh, that's normal, normal paladin normal. stuff. Okay, it's the paladin <laughs> side of things. It's a miracle, but it wasn't due to my bloodline unless I'm a paladin due to my bloodline. I mean, it, be true. it might be. You don't know. You are descended from a, apparently a Mira. I mean, I guess we all are, but you are a little bit closer than most. Is that where angels come from? She created everything. She's an angel? I'm looking over at Melody. I don't know. That's you know, the, know the wings and shit. Oh, yeah, but I mean... Okay. That's the part of... The line of the High Exarch has been in power for a while. That's why there's rumors of azamar about the High Exarch's family, is that they have had a direct line to Amira at times. Just to have one with us is interesting. That and the spear makes me think that... Um, oh, we're destined for greatness. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out, is all the different components we have that are useful in different ways. Because that's a pretty impressive spear... And now one of us can fly? I didn't even know about it. Just... Speaking of the spear, perhaps we should, each of us, uh, take turns examining or exploring it, and perhaps it would reveal more of its nature or our own natures in honoring Amira. I'd be curious if anybody else can um, fire up the um, light spell besides you. Oh, that's the last thing I forgot. Uh, she produces a globe of light from her hand. I can, oh, I, I've good. been able to do this since I was born. A halo? Well, I guess, sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a halo of light. You can string light. it out into a halo? That floats a couple of inches above her hands, and then she moves it around. I'm trying to remember what the light cantrip can do. You can change colors. Can you set it to music? No. It's, what, it's, what am I, a wizard? I don't know. I'm I play for miracles. My miracles. I, guess, I think you meant a bard. Oh. <laughs> can't wizards make music? The wizards can't dance. I think I'm we sorry, have Marduk. a title for the episode. I'm sorry, Marduk, that you <laughs> had to give up your ability to dance to be able to cast trips. It's a solemn price to pay. All right. Warlocks can dance, though. I'm glad they have to deal with the devil and dance in the pale moonlight, so I'm sure they can. And That's a subject we haven't touched in a while. How about that, I... patron? Well, now you see why I was so reticent about dealing with him. I'd like to hold the spear for taking turns. Sure. I pass right. it over to Gabriel. Now, in game terms, sure. Marduk attuned himself to the spear. Something right. we talked about was that we haven't had an upgrade in equipment in quite some time, and that we might finagle it such that the spear can have different abilities with different people. 
and that would give us a reason to pass it around and catch us up a bit in that regard. But or maybe it could serve a role as battlefield healer, or maybe there are some healing auras, or maybe it has different powers or effects in the hands of different fists of Amira. That's um, interesting. What I was gonna go for, which I don't have to, I'm not married to. Sure. This is, you know, metagaming, just talking outside the game. What I was gonna go for was everyone eventually getting some type of artifact, like mm-hmm. weapon or sure. armor or something, staff, uh, wand, that they would attune to and grows with them. Right. So as they grow in power, the item they are attuned to also grows in power, kind of like a legacy type of weapon that becomes more powerful as you become more powerful. And instead of like using something for a couple of adventures and then ditching it because you found a plus yeah, two instead of fair. plus one. I um, just have never heard of a group passing their soul magic item around for different benefits and different. That's kind of unique as far as stories go that I've heard for D and D. Right. That's it's a very unique idea. And like I said, I'm not married to the idea that we have to, each one of you have your own unique item that you find and that grows with you. In the if, context of Marduk, I would think mm-hmm. because I consider the spear an artifact of Amira, that I am privileged and honored to carry and smite evil and do battle in her name. However, Amira has many aspects. And metagaming a little bit because sure. we are down a player who was there to heal and to do stuff, I thought, well, maybe the spear would have different abilities or in the hands of a paladin, maybe it would behave differently. Or in the hands of a cleric, it would behave and have some other properties that maybe would either compensate for having that character unavailable or maybe just something to help kind of mitigate some of the battle, like for some spare combat healing or something like that. Nothing too unbalancing, but, right. you know, and because I am attuned to it as my as an Eldritch Knight, I can grab it and use it whenever I need it. So I'm not afraid of sharing because I know I can always get it back. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which think... makes me a little bit less... You know, Altruistic. Yes. But, we could know. go with something <laughs> along the lines of... One person can be attuned to an item by the rules. We can change True. the rules if we want to. But only one person can be attuned to Oh, it. that's a good point. I didn't think um, about that. Where so it, has to be it could have to lesser it. powers in the hands of others where it acts in a different, lesser magical manner. And the one that's attuned to it, it has special properties. I, I believe it. either John or Thomas had this idea earlier, which was, like, I'm able to produce light in that 15-foot radius. Well, maybe in the hands of a paladin or a priest, they could use their lay on hands ability and it would affect anyone within that, that radius. Or maybe just the equivalent of a healing potion spell, but in that radius in the hands of a priest. Just something to help you maybe be useful or something. What if a non-worshipping warlock grabbed a hold of it who just respects her a lot and thinks I, highly of her? You don't, you don't get to touch it. <laughs> Alder legitimately wanted to see Grodor hold it and see if he blows up, if it kills him, or if there's going to be some adverse effect. Or is it something that maybe when one of us goes down that it can perform spare the dying? Thank the you. Right. I'm not here to try to change it or try to add a bunch of stuff. And Scott, I hear what you're saying that you want everyone to have their signature thing that oh, they just will grow with their power. I don't need it. Right. Like I said, I'm not married to the idea, but I it might get a little complicated to have. Yeah, I think you could do maybe a lesser power with yeah. people who aren't attuned to it. Right. That's that does something doing. cool, but not as good. Or like at this first tier of adventuring, tier one through four, levels one through four. Mm-hmm. It, it would have the same thing where it's a plus one weapon. Someone else okay. grabbed it. My point is, in my dream quest or my vision quest where I discovered this, mm-hmm. to Marduk's point of view, this is tangible proof that Amira exists and is almost like on her way or her first step into coming back into the world. And I don't want to necessarily covet that. That is something that would be important to anyone else who is following Amira. For example, maybe this is something that would lend faith or confidence to Alder. Or maybe 
the impact of Gabrielle or maybe Melody knows other things about it that I don't and maybe she can reveal something about it. It's something that even though I'm carrying it, I treat it like it's a symbol for all of us. Got it. And I think what I'll do is give each of you your own thing somewhere along the line. But the person who's attuned to it, it'll have a special set of abilities that is specific to that person who's attuned to it. And right now that person is you, Marduk. And then if someone else handles it, it'll have lesser abilities. It's still impressive, but lesser in nature than the person who's attuned to it. What effect would having multiple relics or instruments of Amira in proximity to each other, does that... Yeah, you know, I never thought of... I have to be honest, I never thought of the symmetry of the other items coming into play. Right. That's Stay a very in the shield. Idea. Right. Well, exactly. I, yeah, I'm not saying for one person, to, but... No, if, no, I don't we're saying... com- Yeah, working together, and I'm yeah. not trying to turn this into Amira Voltron, although that does appeal to me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, just some ideas. Okay. So, as you're traveling, you pass the spear of Amira over to Gabrielle. Correct. And Gabrielle, you can feel the power thrumming through this sphere. There's no way you could think this is not magical when you hold it. It is absolutely a magic item. You know it from the moment you lay your hands on it. You feel a draw, not in a a way that's overly greedy, but you definitely feel like you could attune yourself to this weapon. And it would do wondrous things just like it does with Marduk. It could do amazing things in your hands. And that's the initial feeling you get from holding the staff. Really, a wondrous magical item. I'm going to take a peek at some of the Celestial just for the sake of it. Sure. Read some of the runes that still don't make any sense. Don't they translate to real words that just are in a cipher that doesn't it's make any sense? It's kind of a yeah, cryptography thing going on. Yeah, it's definitely cryptography that's going on. It's baffling. The way you read it makes no sense at all, but yet you know there's something more to it. You know there's there's some way to decipher, to unravel these ruins that you yeah. just haven't found yet, but it's definitely there. She gives it an experiment to toss around in the air and then goes to pass it to anyone else who wants to try. But while she's doing so, she explains. One of the things all Asimar share, at least while the connection was up and running, we would commune with a spirit, an angel perhaps, while we slept. Mine was really into stories. but stress always the importance of looking at my adventures as if they were a story and expecting me to act the right way to impress upon people. My point was, I bet we could find that this spear has been used at some point before in history when we pass through any big libraries. Aren't we going to a big one? No, there, no, no. No, there is a big one in Vellum. That but we're not, not going up there north. We're going. You're traveling east in the direction west. of Bellum, but you're go. It's to the north, and you're heading more to the straight east, maybe southeast a little bit. I the suggested Halloween. that we check out the library at Iron Sword Pass, but we didn't get to the one that had the biggest. There was like one we were not permitted to go into. Yeah, there was like a restricted or reserved area that you didn't get the permission to enter into. It was you got there very late in the in the day and. Most of the illuminaries that run the library had gone to watch a show. Yeah, we're into the jousting tournament and we're away from there. I to do that. Uh, I'm sure we'll find the story someday then. We just won't be on this leg of our journey while we race to beat the Silanthorn party. Uh, anyone else want to grab at it? Hold it? I don't mind holding it. I. Yeah. And uh, holding a baby for Alder, it's like <laughs> he's really uncomfortable. Uh, I'm gonna break his neck. He's holding it out at a distance, he's not really feeling it. He's like, "You were a holy man once, my friend." Yeah, that's when there was someone to worship who was gone. I hold it in my hand, kind of rotate it. You also feel a thrumming going through Give your hands. Give him a will save. <laughs> and you could feel there's power in this weapon. Come on, Alder, do the thing. What thing am I doing? I don't know. When you say thrumming, like there's actual magical 
Is it somewhat similar to the Soul Shard? Or is it more powerful than the Soul Shard? I, I would feeling? say that it's very similar. Maybe the thrum is a little stronger in the spear than in the soul shards. The soul shards, once it's against your body and you've had it for a while, you grow accustomed to it and you don't really feel it anymore. If you grab it with your hand to do an incantation of some sort, then you'll feel the pulse again. I guess that's the way to say it. The soul shard is more of a pulse where it's intermittent. The spear is this constant vibrating almost like thrumming is the best way I can the thrum is the best word I can I could think to describe what you're feeling. So I take off the necklace that has a soul shard. I'm holding it in my left hand, I'm holding the spear in the right, and I'm bringing them together to touch. They come together and there's no explosion of light or anything that you thought might happen. They just rest against each other. Yeah, I didn't know if it was going to charge the spear to pulse a little heavier. Right. Or to have them link up so that they're both pulsing at the same rate. I was Interesting. just Interesting. Yeah, that was a good theory. It just, they seem to be separate entities. Hmm. That is a bit strange. Well, is it? This is ancient, isn't it? Don't know. It was just a random thought. I hold up the spear and, and point it. And when I say hold it up, the spear point is going up into the sky and, and right. just holding it vertically. And hold my fist out towards Marduk. Looking at him, I slowly start to open my hand as if it's going to fall to the ground. Oh, you're going to drop the spear? Yes. It, the spear starts to drop Marduk. Well, I'm not going to let it just fall. And if it's right. not going to do anything, then I summon it back to my hand. As I stare at Marduk with my hand open and the spear now in his hand, and I go, I knew you were going to do that. That is so cool. What does its vanishing act look like? Flash of light, a puff of smoke, does it turn into thunder and rain down from the sky back into your hand? It blinks out of existence for a second and reappears in Marduk's hand. Right. What did you think would happen when you had the soul shard? I honestly wanted to see if they would link. Because we're told the soul shard is the power of a mirror. Yet the sphere is also the power of a mirror. Why didn't they sync up? Why didn't they... Um, the, Maybe they're already synced? The soul shard is supposed to be her gift to us in her absence. I guess I, I was looking for some unification that proved that they were both power of the mirror. I'm not saying that proves they're not. It's uh, just a curious thought. That's fair. Marduk, may I see the spear? Of course. Can I hey, hand it to Melody? Hey, Marduk, you can recall it to your hand. Have you ever tried sending it to someone else's hand? No. I'm not having to throw it at me. No, and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let, let's try this. Grodor, stand uh, about 30 <laughs> feet away. <laughs> I only have one healing spell left, so please don't crit. I'll catch it. We Errol Flynn this shit. Yeah, I pull out, there's like a band that has my soul shard on it, and I tug on it, and beneath that is a set of I think it's a gavel. The symbol of the goddess Brelo, considered to be Amira's daughter, not by us, but by right. uh, West Cauldron. And I wrap those two around it on the band, just like around the haft of it, and try to take a similar measure of its power. Is there any resonance with the child? There is no resonance with the child, unfortunately. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know what is going on with it, but it seems to be built to a different order than these soul shards. The Melody's been encanting other gods during conflicts, and I don't think you've heard Braylo yet, but apparently she's got one of those. Braylo, actually. I don't know if the last conflict. I definitely Not used the a god of the hunt from out in the roving wilds. So that other amulet you have, is that, that's not a soul shard, is it? It's a kind of soul shard. I mean, her daughter's still kicking around, so she's not really disappeared. But everyone needs a symbol of power to call upon in times of need. 
So when I was being a diplomat in West Cauldron, I did pick up this symbol of Brelo. They are our closest ally, and there's no reason to... I mean, if it's her daughter, she never really spoke on the matter. I don't know. But weren't we taught in school that all gods basically came from Amira? They came from... When we were all given free will, that was when the gods sprouted from our own minds. But as creation of Amira, it's only one step removed. Not necessarily our minds, more our beliefs. But whatever the case, there are children, in a way. But we are children of her. So, grandchildren? Can we be the grandchildren? They would be the children. Well, if you... I don't think this is important, but... (laughs) They are our children. Not you and I, but, like, our ancestors. Mel's understanding is that... Amira didn't make the other gods. Our choice to have faith in other aspects of divinity is what made them. Which would explain why some of them managed to be... In some way, they're just... Okay. I'm from out east. We yeah. weren't mm-hmm. always part of the empire. And yeah, you weird heathens. <laughs> and we got some weird heathen things going on. So, like, we had old gods. I know they're parts of Amira. But that doesn't mean that just because she has taken a hiatus that parts of her aren't helping us. Mm -hmm. So if there's some synergy between her grandchildren and this artifact, I would, you know, like to find that out. Doesn't seem like her daughter was interested, but whatever. Daughter, grandchild, that's a confused lineage. I could see it being called both ways. They would probably call the gods the children of Amira, in a sense, because I know that they were created after you, after the humanoids in the creatures of the land, but they're closer aligned to her, living in the ember yeah, with the her. Yeah, like they're, they're closer to her, so they're more often referred to as her children than you guys are referred at, to. At her. least by my people, <laughs> not necessarily by the rest of the group. Hey, I got a question. So the children are the shattered remnants of whenever Amira shattered and gave us free gods. will. Gave us free will and gave us more gods. Uh, yeah, inadvertently, maybe, but yes. So the shattering are her children, but does she also have physical children, which is what Gabrielle is a descendant of? I don't know that her angels had any sexuality, but... It is said that her angels are the ones that Azimir come from, rather than herself. Grodor's question was, are angels descended physically from Mira as a uh, genetic line, I suppose? There you go. And uh, my understanding is that that wasn't necessary, but I haven't rolled lore. Let me roll lore. Can I get an advantage on account of I was... I'm I'm one. Yeah, I think that's only fair. So let's go with a religion check, please. Wow, Grodor. I've done a lot of stuff. Why are you asking me questions? Yeah, get out of here. (laughs) I rolled a total of 16. Grodor, what did you roll? 19 plus 2. Yeah, 19, right. When you both answer it together in unison, the... They are born from the divine will of Amira. Just said, make angels appear, right? Right. The angels aren't born of Amira. They're created of her divine will, not so much of her divine womb. But... Asimar are created from the divine sexual bits of angels, which is kind of a mind boggler for me. Can a shattered god or a mirror herself have a child, a physical child? They willed it. They could just make one and <laughs> say it's their child. I'm not sure. I think if they wanted to, yeah. It's a good question, though. It's an interesting Same theological dead debate. And can't you answer know? you. Yeah, it's it's probably something that that the priesthood argues about all the time. Stuff yeah. that theses are written on in books about whether Amira could procreate biologically or whether she's too holy to do it. Too holy, yeah, isn't right, it? to be able to do that. Is that what Cauldron believes? Like it was a, it was a biological thing or is, it was... Uh, uh, Brelo? Brelo um, just created out of divine will. It's more complicated than that. Brelo is kind of a manifestation of justice. And is Amira's like the will concept beyond of justice the... as invented by Amira became Brelo? Yeah, when the veil went up, she could no longer act physically in this world, so Brelo is there to empower judges to cast judgment and is basically Amira's will in that country. We have our own justice system, but 
they follow our laws pretty similarly. What and a lovely place. They dive a little deeper into it and have a much more intricate system that's complicated. I don't want to get into it right now. It was a bit of a mess to navigate. But I've got to say that this has all been a very interesting conversation that has made our travel much quicker than I would have thought, because we have now traveled for quite a bit. We have now traveled for eight hours. Mel is still holding on to the spear. I didn't hold on to it for eight hours. (laughs) I don't mind returning. No, no, eight hours since this morning. Ah, since the since two hours travel, give or take. Yeah, okay. Right, and you are at the traveling a little quicker, not paying attention as much to any dangers that might be lurking. It is now four o'clock in the afternoon. You are tired. You are at the end of what your normal travel day would be, about eight hours. You can do what's called a forced march, which is to continue on for another hour if you wish. It would be a DC 11 check. If you fail the check, you gain a level of exhaustion. If you make the check, you're fine. It can go for another hour. Even if you gain a level of exhaustion, you can still attempt to go another hour. And then if you failed again, you'd gain a second level of exhaustion, etc. So you're at the end of the day at this point as far as travel goes because you started quite early in the morning. And you're still in the mountains up ahead, it seems. You could see that the mountains start to fall a bit away and the pathway seems to get a little wider. You seem to be coming to the end of the pass, but you can strive through and move into the Redlands if you want to keep going. And the Redlands are basically a bad land. The weather comes from the west, Amira, hits the mountains and dumps a ton of rain on Iron Sword Pass in the Honeyed Plains and all that area on the western side of the mountains. Once the clouds pass over the Middle Ridge Range, you end up with a, what's a bad land where there's no precipitation in the clouds. It's dry. It's kind of barren. And that leads all the way to the city of Travail. I personally want to at least attempt one hour of a forced march. Mm-hmm. Do we have any group experience or character experience with the Badlands in this area? Mel, who's traveled extensively. And yeah, I've been this way. Rodor, who's traveled this way. Okay. And Marduk, yourself, although you just passed one time right. from the Cinderwall through the Badlands. You know that it's a dangerous place. There's banditry, wild animals, the Draxus, which is almost like a feline, like the body, almost like the size of a horse. And then it has this extended neck out, and then it has the face of a leopard as well. But it has a really long neck. And they're known as the man-eaters of the Redlands. And so those tend to be quite aggressive in the area. So usually when caravans are passing through, they have a very hefty and well-fortified soldiers or guardsmen that go with them. No one travels through the Redlands solo without any kind of weapon on them or some kind of protection on them. It's just a very dangerous area. So you know it's dangerous, but the report was the last okay. group of soul guard made it through all right. I consider Draxus good eating, so I'm not worried about that. And I back up uh, Alder's suggestion that we press on for at least another hour or so. Go ahead, and you feel the groan in your legs. You can feel the burn, even though you're walking downhill. You can feel the sun beating down on your shoulders as it's getting towards late afternoon, but the sun's still out and it's shining bright. It's getting sweaty and hot as you're coming down out of the mountains, but you're not there yet. So go ahead and everybody make a DC 11 constitution check, please. Yuck. Melody got one shy of the goal. Ten. Get some exhaustion. Probably still worn out from yesterday, from the day before when you had exhaustion as well. Yeah, this is just a return. Alder rolled a 14. I'm doing just fine, which I did not expect, by the way. I am a city boy. I don't do this. Marduk rolled a natural 20 for a total of 22. This is a walk in the park for him. With your natural 20, Marduk, Melody was scuffling with her 10 right. and was really close to making it through without exhaustion. With some smart tips, you bump her 10 up to an 11. You actually get her to succeed oh. her test because you did so well, and you're able to kind of focus on her during the walk and realize that she was struggling a bit and helped her out. Walk in the light, Melody. Thanks for that. 
Marduk, you were the one that were kind of suggesting we push on and do double time. You think we we're good for another one? Gabrielle tosses her shield and her pole arm into the back of the wagon <laughs> and then throws off her chainmail, revealing her bloody doublet, uh, and says, I'm good to go. <laughs> and nearly falls over, breathing deeply. Yeah, once you get Is those wings, all of a sudden your feet hurt. <laughs> six for Gabrielle. And Absolutely. she's feeling it, but she, she does take off the armor and says she's ready to go another round if anyone wants to with she exhaustion level on her. one. Well, I think we might be pressing our luck and we still have to make camp and the horse. I'm going to say they're fine because they're going downhill and okay. they haven't really been worked hard this entire journey. And you've been taking good care of them. So I'm going to say they're okay. They can, they can okay. keep going. It's 5 o'clock in the evening. It doesn't get dark until at least 8 or 9 o'clock at night. So you can press on if you want or you can call tonight. I recommend that perhaps we camp. I'm ready to keep going despite my oh, actual okay. level of exhaustion. Don't you have a means to bolster constitution savings throws? What am I, a wizard? <laughs> no, I'm looking um, at, we had blessing or something that gives you a help on advantage or on savings. Yeah, I have it, but I don't have it memorized because it requires concentration and my constitution is very low, so I tend to lose it. No kidding. Uh, it sounds like Gabrielle wants to continue. Sounds like Marduk could call it quits for the night. What's say the rest? I think we can do it one more. If we get one more yay, then the, the consensus is we press on. Because okay. Alder said yes, Gabriel said yes, so if Mel... Grodor or, just sorry, said Grodor, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, then we, we, they have a majority, so... Uh, okay. Subvote, if we run into trouble, we might have to bypass it so that we can make this deadline. Is that understood? Yeah, uh, evasion is preferable, correct. Okay, then I vote yay. Okay. Okay, so this second hour, you really start to come down out of the mountains and into the Badlands. You're still high. You're still elevated, still probably several thousand feet above sea level. But you've definitely come down quite a bit. The mountains start to spread out, and they start to fall away from you to the north and south. Also, their size starts to diminish. Where they're soaring peaks, they're now just peaks and starting to get to the point where they're more large impressive hills the coloration starts to change as you're looking forward to the east and traveling that way on the the south way you notice that things start to get hinged of rust and reds and it's definitely getting warmer as you get lower and lower coming out of the mountains and into eastern amira it's now six o'clock in the evening and everyone can see how they handled that second Hour of forced march. Oh, missed by one. Yeah, I'm tired too. Is the roll at twelve now? The roll is actually twelve now, right? Because it's the second hour, so it's no longer an eleven. Right. Actually and 12. I rolled a ten. Marduk rolled a twenty-one. Gabriel rolled a seventeen. With her armor off, she seems to be doing a lot better. Melody got a sixteen. Rodor rolled a ten. After the second hour of forced march, Alder and Rodor feels the exhaustion. And Gabrielle, who had felt it before, feels the the same level of just low-level exhaustion. Just, you're tired. It's been a long day. There was a lot of activity that happened during the day, and it was rough. As we're doing this second one, I'm keeping an eye open for some place that would be a good camp. Make a survival check to try to find a spot that looked like it was good for camping for the night. I rolled a 18 plus 2 is 20 total. Oh, nice. I find a location that looks really nice, and I say, guys, I'm going to have to take a break here because it's clearly that uh, Kroder's really tired. Yes. And yes. Uh, I think we should stop, not admitting that I am, although I am, yeah. Looks to Gabrielle put, who pushed through this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, she's got a smirk on her face because she can see through your bullshit. She's fine to stop. I so think the I only think... one who didn't end up tired, Mel and uh, Marduk, right? The Travelers, <laughs> yes. Marduk helps me through that, but yeah. No, it's right. like you two have been here before. You wow. spent over 10 hours on the road today. The horses are winded. And you think you found a spot that's, that looks pretty good 
Alder. It's to the north of the road. And I should also state that the road is a little different than the road was leading up to the city of Iron Sword, where it was paved and really well maintained. In Eastern Amira, there are flagstones. There are sections that are paved and well done. Then there are sections that are more brick-like and some that are with missing bricks and some that's more hard-packed dirt and some bricks, a little more scattered. So you get different degrees of the south way, the road that you're on, is definitely a little less comfortable to walk on. The the hills have kind of pushed out to the north and south of you, and you're in some pretty flat area that's heading downward. To the north, there's a couple of small hills, maybe 20, 30 feet high. They're flat topped. They're kind of like little mesas almost. It looks like it would be a good place to camp where you'd have some sight lines where you could see around you pretty well and would be comfortable to sleep on. That's where you suggest the group makes camp. Well, actually, I suggest it to Marduk and ask, does this look good? I know you're better at this than I am, but this looks like a good place that we could potentially stop. Looks fine to me. Okay. So you break camp then as 6 p.m. hits and starts heading towards 7. You feed and water the horses set up a small campfire. Well, I was thinking about this. Now that we're kind of on this side of the mountains, there is a little bit of a technique that we learned to kind of dig a little bit of a a shallow pit, maybe a foot or two down, and keep the fire relatively small. So we'll have the heat, but it also blocks the light from being seen at a distance. We take that precaution. Okay. Marduk, i got to ask. My legs are killing me. It's not a question. Keep them close to the fire, elevate them. You're better at this traveling thing. How do I <laughs> fix this? This is way more taxing than walking through a city. Well, I give them the techniques that I know, but probably what you need to do is massage your legs before the fire, keep them warm, maybe Stay sleep hydrated. in the wagon. Plenty of sleep, says Grodor, as he rolls over in a sack in the back of the So you take these thing. metals and you <laughs> grind them into a paste, and then you're going to spread them all over your legs. You're teasing me now. I am. Yeah, that's poison ivy. Don't do that. <laughs> well, for orcs, it's a whole different thing. I'm sure. And it's like, also actually, it's just... called spicy spinach, equivalent of catnip for an orc. <laughs> hey, it uh, works for that? me. You make camp. You set up a watch. And just as dusk is falling, I'd like everyone to make a perception check as the sun is just disappearing under the mountains. Would, do those of us with night vision get a bonus here, or is it just straight up? It's going to be straight up because it's still dust. There's still some light out there. It's more of just a, because you have to be looking in the right place at the right time kind of roll. Our dude right. rolls a 20. Grodor rolled an 18. Gabrielle got a 6. Melody uh, got a 12. And Alder got a 10. You guys awesome. are looking at your feet. Yes, I am oh, definitely yeah. looking at my feet. <laughs> or the back of your eyelids because you're exhausted. Marduk... And Grodor, you're kind of talking, just having some conversation about the Redlands and the last time you passed through each of you and just having some conversation. And you look out through the north and maybe a mile or two in distance away, you see what looks to be two large creatures moving kind of to the south as you're looking out over to the north. But they're also moving a little bit to the east as well, and they look large. Are they humanoid or are they no, uh, beast-like? No. These are beast-like, and I'll give you a close-up of them, but they're at a distance, and they were that creature, the Draxus that I was talking about earlier, that are renowned for being uh, man-eaters in this area. So uh, I probably pointed it out and said, I tend to one those two little specks out there are those Draxus things, so they're big specks. Probably. Are they prowling or are they just kind of trotting along? It looks like a prowl to you. Oh, boy. Okay. I just want one day of no encounters. Can we move, like, further the opposite direction we're kind of heading? Already, we've already decamped, so. You've dealt with these before, or you're aware? Can I roll to determine how much I know about them? Would this be, like, sure. a nature roll? Yeah, nature roll. My knowledge might be a little bit out of date. <laughs> so. As a local, I am also rolling. Okay. I've heard of these yeah. things. Every, yeah. The three of you who have traveled in this area can make rolls for nature. I know away. their name. 
Marduk rolls a five. Gorder's heard about a lot about them. He rolled a seventeen. Okay. Melody got a twenty-two and uh, had one as a pet. Apparently, oh. a little pup was a was a Melody pet. Well, my pet. question is, what is their prey? What are they afraid of? What noise do I need to make to drive them away? Okay, that's a great question. Their coloring helps them blend in. That's right. lucky we spotted them at this time rather than later. But generally, they're afraid of prey big enough to pick them up. The war eagles that were tamed back in Iron Sword Pass are just native to this area, so you will see giant flying eagles occasionally. They like to snatch on these things. And, Gerdar, what else is out there? Yeah, anything as big as them or bigger with wings, I don't think they like, but they're basically the alpha of the area. Otherwise, and um, they... Yeah, uh, they're the best for ground. My guess is... Wyverns is the other one. Yeah, my guess is they haven't spotted or picked up our trail yet, so that's why they were more out in the open. But if they do start hunting their prey, they are very stealthy, and they sneak up quick and easy on what they're looking for. Well, they'll probably be upon us here in a little bit. And if they're man-eaters, then likely they're following or heading in toward our camp to their hunting. Yeah, they, they can't so, be poisoned well. They do poison other things, and they're... Mm. And I don't believe we can pack up. A lot of people are exhausted. And, hey, GM, uh, just wanted to check if I could make a roll kind of as a declaration, though this game doesn't have them. Can I do like a survival and or nature thing to check if I have wyvern piss that I could spread around? <laughs> wyvern urine. That'll summon the mating wyverns. We'll oh, no, I didn't know they were in heat. Uh, <laughs> a bad um, night for you. Let's say that you can, yeah, I guess it could be a roll. It would be a, a really fortuitous roll if you go ahead and make it. I'd say it would have to be, that's a tough one. It doesn't have to be Wyvern. It can be the War Boys. Eagles make a, a minor business of selling their urine. Well, I'm sure. The travelers? Or yeah, I'm sure it exists in this world. Anything to save you from being attacked by a man-eater in the Redlands is going to be a potion or a poultice or something that is sold on the market. You having it after spending a year in training in temerity is a little less likely, but not impossible because you just were traveling through iron sword. And we could have said off camera that you pick some up. You didn't know about those at that time. So there's no way you could actually say that because you didn't know about them, which isn't fair to you. I so, roll the 20 story and short, do know about this area. So Exactly. You do. We, I, we just didn't know this encounter was going to potentially occur. Go ahead and this is more survival, knowing how to live off the land and what to do to survive in the land. I think that's probably the best role for this occasion. We should probably prepare to defend this camp. Gab's putting on her armor right. and wondering yeah. if we had time enough to take a short rest so I could roll a hit dice. I hmm. think you can. Definitely had time to roll for a short rest. Yes, yeah, so, a short rest. First of all, does anyone need healing? Because Brother Byron still has healing slots available. Actually, I do, yeah. And Alder, you were asking about what they're scared of. If, if you can make the sounds of those war eagles that we heard at the jousting fight thing at the city. Can yeah. you do an illusion of any type, Grodor? Could Gabrielle look like one of those eagles and I can make the noise like one of them? No. Oh, sorry. sorry. Mm-hmm. That's okay. To... Just a thought. I'm all out of flight anyway. Brother Byron has. He says some prayers over you, Alder. Mm-hmm. He holds his soul shard, whispers prayers to Amira, and he rolled a natural one. That is five points of healing. And then he has one more spell slot that he can use if anyone else needs healing. I think Gabrielle probably has the most damage. Okay, that's seven damage healed. He rolled a three plus four is seven. A max health. Yeah, so we like over you, you as well. I'm a pretty woman. What can I say? All right. 
I have one more healing spell if we don't want to spend hit dice for some reason. So, yes, it is It is a short rest, which allows you to spend your hit dice, so you each have three hit dice to heal if you wish. I rolled a seven, which heals me the rest of the way. Okay, anyone else? I'm going to suggest that Grodor and I prepare. I think we have spells that are long range. Let's prepare ourselves to hit hard on these predators. Uh, well, I have a question. Uh, Melody, do you have some kind of uh, older yeah. Hold on. Um, War Eagle marking? Checks, pockets. Melody rolls a 21 for survival to check if she had the wherewithal to pick up some of that. She thought of it traveling back through when she was in Iron Sword, found a shopkeep that was open late at night, went ahead and purchased some War Eagle War Eagle Musk. Yeah, that certainly should do something to thwart the approach of the Raxus. Okay, so here's my concept. We take an arrow, wrap some cloth, dip it in this, and shoot it towards them so that they can smell it, in addition to making the sound to maybe just simply drive them away. Scare the heck out of them. Thoughts, ideas, better ideas. I'd prefer to put it around us so that they don't catch us while we are napping, but I guess someone's going to stay up. Well, if they're already on the hunt for us, I And they just paused and they're sniffing in the air. Right. All right. Arrows it is. We can do They're both, still a mile away. They're, yeah, they're I can't now. shoot that far. Alder. I thought you were amazing. Could you <laughs> sneak around perhaps and lay out a perimeter so they will... Absolutely. I mean, you're also exhausted. Yes, but I am pretty sure I could sneak reasonably well. I don't know the effect of exhaustion. Uh, I don't think my exhausted. character's ever been that way. How do we get rid of it? A long rest. Does it clear one level, two levels, all levels? I'm looking up. Exhaustion, here we go. Level one, disadvantage on ability checks. Level two, speed halved. So I think we just have disadvantage on ability checks if you have a level one. So we have one level of exhaustion. Then for the second row, we got a roll of disadvantage. That's extreme. So the second is. hour of travel would be could have been, It should have been a disadvantage, yeah. Okay, it's we don't great. do two hours again. <laughs> Finishing a Force long rest. is tough. Yeah. Finishing a long rest reduces a creature's exhaustion level by one, provided yeah. that a creature has also ingested some food and drink. And you guys are exhausted for the most part. So they stop, they sniff the air, and then almost as if they have some senses that are really impressive, they look in your direction. They then sniff more. They crouch a little bit and lift their heads long and high into the air and are sniffing the air. If we are to use the musk around the perimeter, now would be the time while they're still far away. But they're closing in. Yeah, I mean, Um, there's the sporadic Joshua tree, small shrubs and scrub brush as well. That's what stands between you and them right now in a 20 or 30 foot high ridge that you're on. Directions that they're coming? They're traveling from the north to the south. You are. And the wind goes from southwest to northeast. Your sense kind of being taken in their direction. I want to lay out this urine in a way that the wind is going to blow it in between us. So yeah. you're saying the wind is blowing to the northeast. northeast. I want to put it to the west of us so the wind's going to blow it both east and north. Yeah, I do a west to northern line then to guard us. Yeah, I'll guard you while you're doing it, just in case one got closer than we thought. What kind of role is laying this out? I imagine dissuading these creatures from attacking us is probably at advantage at this point, given that we have a couple of their natural deterrents. Yes, the fact that you know about them is incredibly helpful. Metagaming for a second, it should make uh, avoiding them a realistic possibility because of the fact that you have the musk or the urine, you have the war sound eagle. of the war eagles, you're in pretty good shape as far as that goes. And so what we have is a group of adventurers on a flat topped 25 foot tall hill. The hill falls away to your west and to the south. And so you're kind of your backs up against it as these creatures approach from the north to the north of you so that the wind picks it up 
and carries it towards these creatures. Mel lays down the musk 15, 20 foot in the distance away from you to the north. The creatures have definitely picked up your scent and they start moving at a, not a gallop, but more like a, a trot towards you. And they are impressive beasts. They're the size of horses and they are muscular and fierce looking. And as they move forward, their heads kind of weave to the left and to the right, almost like an anticipation as they move forward quickly. They close the gap from a mile distance to about maybe a quarter mile away. And immediately their bodies stop and their heads duck down low and they look all around them. They seem very disconcerted. They seem very at ill ease. They're definitely not as aggressive and as intent on charging towards you as they were just moments earlier. And we'll end it there for the night. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate all the listeners out there that are taking their time to listen to this story, The Heretic. And thanks to the players. Everyone had a great job. A lot of role playing tonight, a lot of personality development, which I thoroughly enjoy and thought everyone did a great job. Nice work. And we'll see you again in a week. Thank you for listening to Knights of the Night Actual Play Podcast. If you'd like to send us a question, comment, or feedback, you can reach us in a number of ways, including Twitter at KOTN underscore podcast or by emailing us at feedback at KOTNpodcast.com. And don't forget the iTunes reviews. We also have a Facebook page, which can be found at facebook.com slash KOTN.podcast. While on Facebook, you can join like-minded folks at our fan page at facebook.com slash groups slash KOTN fan. And lastly, there's our blog at KOTNpodcast.com, where there's an Amazon link on the right-hand side. For those of you who'd like a more steady way to help us pay the bills, or if you live outside the U.S., you can help by donating to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash KOTN. And please remember to join us next week for more mystery and adventure. He's a female Asimar paladin. Is it Asimar? I never know how to pronounce two A's next to each other. I never do either. Whenever I see two letters together, vowels go walking. The first one, just say Asimar. It sounds better better than saying Asimar. Yeah, Yeah, say Asimar. Just I think it's actually. uh, Go ahead. I don't care. I just don't want you to say ass. I say it like (laughs) Hagendas. So ha, like like a ah, like Asimir. Asimir. That's fun. I, I just I like think it. of Hagen Dust. I just like ice cream. All right. Nice job, guys. I think that's a really good that was a really good plan. I was anticipating a combat with a with a worn out group, but there's every chance that they're gonna I'm gonna roll for them, but there's every chance they might not be hungry enough to attack what they think is a known enemy. I don't know, it's a really cool idea. I like it. That's good. Right, Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy, sure. their, uh, enjoy your weekend, guys. Yeah, you too, Mike. Get some you rest. too, Mike. See ya. All right, guys, I think I am going to log off, too, if I can figure out how to get my cursor over there. You can figure out how to log off. Yeah. All Thank right. You, you have a good week. You have a good weekend. See you next time. See you. See you, Jim. See you, Jim. Is it called an earthquake? Sure. Why not? A sphere quake. We're not maybe. on Earth. Yes. Yeah, right. A sphere quake is fine. All right, cool. I never want to do a battle on a cliff again. I don't know about you guys. I never want to DM one again. As a uh, Hagen Das as Azamar ish ness about them. That's good luck editing that. Yeah, I was thinking the same, thank you. That's why there's rumors of Azamar ness about the High Exarchs family. Alright, I will roll religion with advantage and it will still roll bad. No. Let's do it. Can I help you? I Everyone already have an advantage. You yeah, can make a separate roll. Right? If you could do it right at the end when you make the roll, but I think you're really making the roll all the way through the whole <laughs> mm-hmm. the whole hour to see how you're reacting to it. So I'm going to say a no on that one okay. for the guidance. But it was also a, like a cantrip level, right? Yeah. So you could do like a Benny Hill thing where he keeps, <laughs> on, smacking him, <laughs> keeps on smacking him in the head as he goes, guidance, guidance, <laughs> guidance, guidance. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> you got this. Keep walking. Uh, He's a motivational coach. Rodor the, the, the 
trainer. Target, Joel Sargent. Right. Uh, I'm going to say it in no one that one just no, that's for fine. logistics, just, but yeah. Let's... Other possible titles for this episode that were available for voting on the Facebook fan page were Lizards Can't Dance. Yeah, you odd heathens. I'm impressed by what you think of my muscles. What does this finishing act look like? It's a confused lineage. And, yeah, we're destined for greatness.